Hello and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking the N16 Almira wheel trims and we're going to be spraying them up with the metallic top coat. The next stages will be the metallic top coat. Um, once the metallic top coat is on I'll be masking off these areas here. So masking off the whole of the trim and then spraying the chrome finish paint onto these to give the nuts or the, uh, the fake nuts a chrome effect which uh, I'm not sure if it will work or not but we will certainly give it a go but certainly the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give this primer coat a bit of a rub down with some 1200 grade wet and dry so I've got this from my wet and dry collection and my son is going to assist so Christian if you would like to have a seat so the first thing that we need to do is to rub these down with some wetted uh, 1200 grade wet and dry so if you take the wet and dry and fold it in half so what, what does this do? other way so you get the media surface facing so it basically sands but it also sort of polishes as well when you apply water to it so if you wet it with the water, and I'll do a piece as well so you can watch what I'm doing. So if I wet mine with the water, what you want to do is you don't press hard, you lightly press, you just lightly sand, like so. Now what you'll notice is that some of the primer will come off onto the um, I think you're doing wet and dry. Yeah, it's because um, my hands are probably heavier. So if you do notice the primer coming off, that's absolutely fine. That's exactly what we want, because we want to remove any of the top surface imperfections. So if you do that half, I'll do this half. Yeah, that's fine. So you can refresh it like that. And to do these bits, you want to sort of make it a curve like that, and then just get in there like so. Like that. Okay. Uh, like this. What this also serves to do is it's removing some of the previous imperfections on the that have come through the primer layer. So we don't need to go too mad because we don't want to remove all the primer. It is going quite quickly. I, I, I could see it was roughing in part before and now it's not. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. So when you do this you smooth in the primer out and as an effect, you're also smoothing out the imperfections. Yeah, that bit there, uh, the plastic was quite badly damaged from a previous um, a previous scuffing. So don't worry if you can't get it to be absolutely perfect. There are some areas that will not be that will not be perfect, but they're not going to be bad. Why does it look like this when you get it wet? I'm not sure. It's, I think it adds sort of a, a layer of lubrication. So mm. it sort of removes, but also to a certain degree polishes as well. So what you're left with is quite a nice smooth surface to apply the top coat to. What you will notice, particularly on some of the areas that haven't had such a quite a good layer of um, primer or quite as much coverage, you will notice that you actually go back down to the um, the original coat or the original material. In these instances, what you would ideally want to do is to apply another layer of primer. 
However, it's only one area that's affected, so I'm going to be lazy and just apply the top coat, mainly because the top coat is going to be the same colour as the coat that uh, is the colour that's um, underneath the primer. I think I'm, we're almost done. I'd say we're done. I think you're right. We've got a little bit more. Yeah, so one. once you've got all of that done, take this rag and thoroughly dry the wheel trim. It's coming off. It, look, it is looking better now. Because I was thinking, aren't we going to dry it? Oh yeah, you have to dry it. If you don't dry it, uh, the moisture will get into yeah. the top coat. And it's also got some residue left over that we need to clean off. It does. And I'll be showing you how to do that in a second. But do you feel it feels a lot smoother? Oh yeah. I was thinking... Really smooth now. Yeah. So I was thinking, it's, it looks smooth, but it's not smooth. And then after we've done this, it's quite smooth. Here isn't, here isn't that smooth here. Well, to get that to be a bit smoother, put a little bit of extra wet and dry on there. Just give it a quick scrub down. And once you've done it, wipe it down. Yep, that's and you should notice that now it's nice and smooth. Yep. Yep, there you go. Perfectly smooth. So this is not a complex uh, wheel design so or trim design, so there isn't really much in the way of indentations and other things. So it is fairly easy just to wipe it down, make sure that you get into these grooves as well. Yep. Fill in the rest of the grooves too. And once that's done, you'll notice that it's a lot drier a lot smoother. Oh, that is really smooth actually. Very here, nice. Here is really smooth. Yes it is. It's basically taken away... What it does is when you spray, um, this, a spray, certainly an aerosol spray, is never perfect. And it sort of bubbles, mi microscopically bubbles, which can sort of cause a slightly sort of bumpy feeling on the surface. If you rub it down between coats, as you're doing here, you get a really nice, smooth finish. Yep, nice and smooth. So the next thing you want to do is we have here some isopropyl alcohol. At this point, I would recommend putting on your face mask. Definitely. 99.9% .9 alcohol. Yes, don't drink it. You will die. No, that would be illegal and child abuse of some description, and then you could bring child life. So with the masks, the yay. metal bit goes up on the note. Why are you saying yay about ringing child life? <laughs> Can't just ring up for a chat, you know. <laughs> so with the with the mask, if you on the metal bit there, if you squeeze it to follow the contour of your nose, there you go. And that'll form a nice tight seal, so that you can't. Um, well, so that the majority of fumes won't get in. It's also a good idea to open the door, as I'm doing here, and Is ventilate the, the room. No cats, no. So there's a nice cool breeze coming in, which will help as well. Wait, I can't, don't, don't open, don't, I need to get my hair out of the way. That's right, I'll take this rag so I can get it ready. Cloth, rather. Put it on now. Okay, my, that, that my hair is still in the way. I'm trying to get it around my ears, but it's quite. Sorry, it's around the ears. There you go. How's that? So, take some um, take some of this. We don't need a huge amount, so that should be more than enough. And then you take that on the rag, which I'm just showing the camera. And just wipe around the 
alcohol of the trim. How does the alcohol help? Well, the alcohol cleans it. So the alcohol takes away. Can you see that? It's already getting mm. some of the stuff that the water wash didn't catch. So it removes any imperfections. It also removes any grease from when we've been touching it like that and feeling it. So it removes fingerprint grease and other things that would sort of give us a potentially imperfect paint finish. There you go. Do you want to do the other side? So we could do that side. So try tolerant. not to touch it with your hands. Mm. This is very tolerant. Which is a very good point, Christian. If you want the best results, you want to take time. So an old adage, which is actually true when doing work like this, is the more time that you spend on it, the better the result. If you do just a quick rush job, it will look like a quick rush job. If you take a bit longer and take a bit more care on it, it will look a lot better. Mm. It's something I could never grasp when I was younger, trying to do sort of small repairs on cars, that I couldn't get it done in 15 to 20 minutes and have it looking any good. And I've discovered over the years, and having listened to sort of other people's advice, that the more time that you spend, the more quality the finish. And don't be afraid if you make a mess of something to go back to the beginning and try again and start again. Mm. That's why when we're at the primer stage, it's quite forgiving. We can actually go back to the beginning if we need needed to and start all over again. Oh, I think that might be done. Yeah, I think you're right. You did it quite thoroughly. Very thoroughly, actually. I find out where there it is. So, yep, there we go. So we'll move these bits out of the way. Over there is the metallic finish. I see. I thought you can keep on saying metallic. That's the one. So if you bring that over, and there we go. So we've had this in the room warming up and it should be fairly warm now so the paint will be nice and free flowing. And what we need to do is we need to shake this for approximately two minutes or so. So I'm going to pause the camera and get shaking. So once it's agitated what we need to do is you hold the paint like this you hold it about six inches away from the trim itself or the uh, area that you're going to be painting or the object you're going to be painting and move everything out of the way that could either spill onto it and damage it in any way and you do a on off on off on off type kind of approach and you're fairly quick with your sweeps like that so you don't go slowly, because if you go slowly, it'll do this. So if I move this out of the way, I'll show you what it does. If you stay in one particular area and go, do you see it just pulls like that mm. and makes a nasty runny mess, which won't be much good for anyone really. So on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off on off and so on and so forth and so on and so forth and so on it smells like um licorice there you go do you yeah, want to have I a go i do recognize the smell uh, what, what do i need to do there's nothing there is you've got to do so i've sprayed it that way if you spray it this way Oh, further away. Do you see what you're doing there? Yep, yeah, yeah, I do. So you'll be able to cover those over, but go further away. That's it. Do you see now you're covering those over? And you're getting a more uniform finish. Okay, it's getting quite hard to do. That's all right, I'll do the other bit. So the other sweep as we go, like so. Oh, 
going to go into the cavities for the nooks and crannies, like so. And done. After a couple of coats, we now have a nicely finished, well, top coated trim. And there you go. That's actually looking pretty good. That's a good result there, Christian. You've done a very good job. Thank you. What did you think of the spray and how does it feel? What do you mean? What did you think of it? Did you enjoy it or yeah. was it fiddly? It was a bit fiddly towards the end because I got quite polished. Yeah, that's because you're having to reach, whereas I'm You've got not having arms. to stretch out. Which is why you might, if you you might actually find it easier to stand up. Do it like that. And done. Now the next step is to take your painted trim and pop it somewhere where it's going to get attacked by lots of heat in front of this gas fire in this corner of the room is the perfect location so what we can do because we haven't painted the underside we can gently prise it away and relocate it down there and On to the next one. So, if you found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.